show. But right now, let's get to the latest on Antonio Brown because today marks the second grievance with the NFL. You know, Brown wants to wear his preferred helmet, and there is news coming out of that grievance today. So let's bring Adam back in. Adam, what's happening with today's grievance? Susie, the grievance today already has wrapped up. Antonio Brown has stated his case, and his case basically is that he found a helmet that has been approved, but basically he was not given the year grace period that other players got with their helmets. He made his argument to an independent arbitrator today, and a decision by early next week, possibly Monday, is considered to be likely. So we should have news. I think a lot of people believe it could be difficult for him to win this grievance, but he believes he's got a legitimate case. Now we'll wait to hear the arbitrator's decision which will go a long way towards restoring peace and stability to everybody, the Raiders family, and everybody that watches Hard Knocks <laughs> from this point forward. <laughs> but the hearing is over, and now we'll await the decision, which could come by about Monday or so. But the good news on this, right, if this still holds true, is that his agent, Drew Rosenhaus, said no matter what happens, he's sticking with the team. That's the expectation right now. Yes, Susie. Okay. Well, that's good news. We like that. We, we, so we'll all wait yeah. breathlessly, right, for the latest I like, in this? I like, I like that. I'm not going to make a big deal about the field. We, we like the field. We thought the field was, was perfectly ready to roll. You'll have to ask Green Bay about that. It is what it is, and it was the same for both teams, and we made the adjustments that we felt were in the best interest of our football team, and we moved forward. We were going to have all our, our starters play, and, and just it was it was just one of those deals. We certainly have all played on much worse surfaces in our life, but it was just one of those deals where they weren't playing their, their starters, and so uh, we just decided to sit them. Adam, I know part of the reason they were playing in Winnipeg goes back to when the Raiders didn't know where they'd be playing this season at all. But can you fill us in on more of the details? Well, essentially, Susie, both teams inspected the field. And as you heard Matt LaFleur say there, he didn't feel comfortable playing his starters on a field that had holes in the end zone where the goalposts were positioned for Canadian Football League games with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. So the Packers made the decision to pull out their players. Obviously, both sides together made the decision to play the game, shorten the field. And when the NFL's playing preseason games on 80-yard fields where the end zone is in the 10 yard line area it becomes a little bit embarrassing to everybody but they had gone up north to play this preseason game they were intent upon pulling it off and so they went out there and played it on a shortened field that's what happened again the Packers were involved in a similar situation back in the Hall of Fame game in 2016 against the Colts couldn't play that game but it's a bonus fifth preseason game for everybody no big deal to simply cancel it in this particular case with all the people up north with this being one of the games becomes an issue they played the game Packers didn't play their regulars Another safety issue, the NFL bypassed it at this point in time, and they were able to get the game in. Unfortunately, only two players were hurt. Don't know that it was related to the field, but the Packers lost their wide receiver, Equinamia St. Brown, and Rashawn Gary to injuries. The two teams played it, Susie. Right, they played. Of course, the injuries are unfortunate. Hey, it's unfortunate. Aaron Rodgers was going to play. That's what you know, I said over the highlight. I mean, you, you wanted to see him get some reps in a new offense, and because the field isn't up to standard... He doesn't get to play. I mean, so you could say, oh, preseason, no big deal. But, mm. uh, yeah, big deal. And, and I think this is a bigger deal than when we're talking about with Cam Newton in terms of reps for Aaron Rodgers. Look, I know it's Aaron Rodgers, but he's never worked with Matt LaFleur exactly. before. And now you're Matt LaFleur, you're a rookie head coach. You're trying to establish yourself. So now let's spin the story forward. What do we do next week? Does he not play? No one wants to play their quarterback in week four. So now you're going into opening day and the whole operation between play caller, who's also the head coach, and quarterback will happen for the first time in the first regular season game. So that's really putting a rookie head coach in an unfair position. And moving forward, look, you have to do what the league says, but when you talk about going to Hawaii, Mexico, London, or in this case, Winnipeg, you know, teams are going to have some consternation because of situations yeah. like this. From a procedural standpoint, obviously, you would like to have him get reps so he can hear Matt LaFleur's voice in his ear and call some plays in the huddle, get up to the line of scrimmage, execute some of the basic protection calls, maybe a few audibles, maybe hand off the ball, maybe throw a couple quick passes. I, I get that. 
But see, if you back it up further to really what the issue is that we're talking about here, and that's the condition of the football field, coaches shouldn't be put in a position to where they have to make those decisions. Coaches shouldn't be walking out there on pregame of an NFL game. We're talking NFL. We're not talking Bucksmont Pop Warner League that I played in when I was eight years old. We're talking about the NFL field. They shouldn't walk out there and see guys on their hands and knees with a bag full of rubber pellets trying to fill in a hole. That's This is the NFL. It's the NFL, and they ask you to go play here, then the field should be in great shape. I tell this story all the time. I remember talking to Andy Reid once just about the overall football operation. What are the things that are most important to you? What should people really focus in on? One of the first things he said was the condition of practice fields and game fields is paramount. It's, he goes, you think it's just, hey, we just line a grass field and go out there and play? No, it's not. He said, this is where guys are expecting to have pristine A-plus surfaces to play on because their legs and their lower body are their livelihood. And you don't put them at risk. I would have had a hard time putting any of my guys out there, quite honestly. And, I mean, I know it's football and, and injury is, is part of the game, but the field should never be in question. The playing surface should never be a question, ever. And, Lewis, to that point, as Adam Schefter mentioned earlier, two key players, Equinemius St. Brown and Rishon Gary, a first-round pick. Now, in fairness, those injuries may have happened anyway, We'll never know, but now the optics and the perception is, well, they got hurt on a substandard field, and now that's another storyline that both the league and the Packers are going to have to deal with. But those are two key players for the Packers. Then their availability is now in question. Yeah, it's just going to fuel the paranoia of coaches and GMs whenever you're asking them, as you mentioned, to go somewhere else to play where they don't have any control over the field and they have never seen this, this surface or this stadium before. Their paranoia is just going to be just through the roof as far as, is this a good enough field for our guys? Are we putting our guys at risk? And I'm definitely not putting my top line players at risk. So the NFL, so now the preseason is going to get called into question. People aren't going to be watching the games. We're going to be talking about 18 games. Here we go. We'll talk about that later. But yeah. to me, if, if you're asking NFL players to play at 80 yards, <laughs> pretty much at that point, you can say we shouldn't be out there. If pregame, you're seeing guys with a bag of rubber pellets on all fours going, trying to smooth over and the field, I'm like, no rounds thanks. for you to, No you thanks. Know. Susie, how right. many meters is 80 yards, right? They're on the metric system up there. Don't ask me. <laughs> That's, yeah.